Welcome to J is for Justice podcast. If live breaking news and following true crime is your thing, then please consider subscribing to my channel. And if you like what you see in my videos, please consider giving them a thumbs up. Happy Monday, everyone. Welcome to J is for Justice. If you are new here and you like what you see, please consider subscribing to my channel. And if you're watching today's video, please give it a like. I want to say hello to all the my moderators that are here. The ones that I see are Kendi, Angie B, Jammers, J -J -J Jammers, and it looks like those are your moderators, right? Meow. If you have any problems in chat, just go ahead and at Jammers, at Angie B, at Kendi, you get the drift. Thank you for being here today. I hope you guys had a great relaxing weekend. I had a wonderful weekend. We shared some of uh, our weekend haps in the Discord. If you're not a member of Discord, you do have to be a member of this channel to gain access, but that's really easy to do, and the moderators will show you how to do that as well. We got Mike Sanner coming in hot. Good morning, Mike. Hello, Melissa B. and all of the loungers. We got Miss Robin here, too. We got all of our all of our people. We're missing a couple. But, you know, everybody has lives. So taking time out of your life to be here, whether you're moderating, whether you're listening, whether you're a lounger or not, I appreciate you being here. Please hit that like. It's a great way to help me get in the algorithm. So I have a couple housekeeping items to discuss. I put out the Bethany Funk exculpatory evidence live that was on the 411. I uploaded it over here and so many of you watched it. And I'm so grateful for that. But the problem is YouTube took it down. So they took it down and they were like, this is bullying and harassment. And I'm like, what the fuck are they talking about? So I go and read it. And I find the timestamp where it says I violated their terms of service. And it's not for Bethany Funk. I thought, oh, Lord, I've, I've struck a chord with Bethany Funk and I don't want to do that. So I felt sick to my stomach. And then I opened up the email and I saw why they took it down. And they took it down because Richard Batanti, the investigator who filed the affidavit in Nevada court, which was a public record that we all saw. We all saw Richard walking into the King Road house doing his investigation with Ann Taylor. But I Googled his name in that live and it came up Richard Batanti, you know, it was like a public, like fast people search or some shiz. And I showed it, but it didn't show his address or anything. It wasn't anything revealing. It was just his freaking name. Well, this guy's like a public figure because he's an investigator and he's got like a public website and he's got a public Facebook. And I looked at all that. Well, whatever. So I appealed it. And they denied it and they removed the whole motherfucker. The whole thing came down. So I have cut out that section and I am uploading it as we speak because I don't know what's striking a chord with it. If you were going to kill somebody, how would you get away with that? I guess if I had to defend someone who called into a podcast and said, if you were going to kill someone, how would you get away with that? I'd probably be scrambling to. I don't know if this has anything to do with him or if it's just YouTube. I have no idea. I have no idea. Casey Marie, good morning. And Meg's Mega. We got Mega. Make everything great again when Mega is here. So just to let you guys know, I'm going to put it back up. It's coming back up without Batanti's shiz. But you know what? Everybody and their brother can make videos about the surviving roommates. And YouTube keeps that shit up. Basically calling them drug dealers and killers. That's all fine and dandy in YouTube world. I guess you can be a piece of shit and lie and make shit up. And YouTube's cool with that. I don't know. I don't know. But that's what happened. I just wanted to um, let you guys know because you're going to see it go up again and you're going to be like, 
Why is she uploading this for a third time? That's why. I'm not trying to get extra views or anything crazy like that. Because, you know, that's what people will think. That's what they'll think. So that is the first thing. Um, What's the second thing? The second thing is during this live, I have a ton to go over. So there's going to be a lot of stuff. And I'm not going to be able to keep up with chat like I normally do. So I just wanted to let you guys know that. And if you really, really, really want to get something out to me, do it in the super chat or the super sticker section. And then at the end, or like I'll take breaks and I'll read your comments because I have a lot. I was was originally going to start this off talking about just Asa, right? Easy peasy. Easy peasy, as my granddaughter would say. Talk about Asa, right? Well, when I was researching for Asa, I came across a whole bunch of other crazy information regarding this case. It just keeps getting wilder and wilder and wilder. Eagle Eight's flying over. That's all I need. That's all I need. I got an Eagle Eight. Tara Mama, why is there no investigating Asa? Because I've heard uh, had a bad feel for for her from the start. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm, me too. Me too. And we'll get into all of that. But first, we're going to get into this latest stuff that I came across. And welcome, Jeff Kent. Welcome, everyone. Hey, Olive Juice. Welcome, babe. Um, But if you want to get something across or you want to say something during the live stream, please super chat or super sticker. And I will get to it. I promise. So let's get into our first order of business because I found this too today and I want to give huge props to his name is Raul and he is on X and his name is Catch Lisk on X if you follow this case and you're on um, X and you want to you know see what this is about. He is amazing. I don't know who he is. I started following him. His he is so relentless with the, with this case. He's literally I don't know if he's helping investigators, but I I can't even put it into words. Like the guy is just he's got everything lisk. So if you are into this case, he's definitely I think the key person that you should be following. Now I came across a lot of stuff, but this first thing we're going to talk about is from Catch Lisk. And I think it's important because this beautiful girl went missing 13 years ago. Or no, I'm sorry. Her body was found 13 years ago today. This is the beautiful Melissa Bartholomew. She was 24 years old. She was a talented hairstylist with very attainable goals of opening her own salon. She came from Buffalo, New York in pursuit of those dreams to New York City. Melissa was last seen on 7-10-2009. Her cell phone was tracked to cell towers all along the South Shore. And she would be the first victim on Ocean Parkway to be found. So, yeah. Can you believe it? Her family has been living with this for 13 years. She's gorgeous. It's so sad. But I really wanted to pay attention to that. I wanted to, you know, really focus on that. And this is Catch Lisk on X. Okay. So that's the first thing we're going to be going over. And she is. She's gorgeous. It makes me sick. It makes me sick. So let's get into the latest. Okay. Because this is going to be a deep dive into things that is new to me. And I want to present it correctly and I don't want to give you guys anything that's wrong and I want to do it in order. So that's why I'm focusing. So the first thing we're going to be focusing on is this guy, John Bit Bitroth. Okay, John Bitroth. Let me show you his picture. 
He was a suspect. They thought he was Lisk. Okay, so let's dig into who he is and then we're going to get into what's going on today with this man, okay? So Bitloroff is a former carpenter turned convicted murderer who was born on July 1st, 1966 in New York. And this is from the U.S. Sun, by the way. He first made headlines in 2014 after he was arrested for the 1990s murders of 31-year-old Rita Tengrendi and 20-year-old Colleen McNamee. Both women, who were believed to be sex workers, were brutally beaten, strangled, and dumped in the woods. Now, I don't think this guy has fantastic morals by any means, okay? I don't think he's morally correct. Okay, let's just get that out in the open. I don't think this dude's morally correct. However, there's a lot to this. Police were able to link Bitroth, a father from Manorville, to the case thanks to DNA evidence from his brother, Timothy, who had been convicted of criminal contempt the year prior. It was the miracle of DNA which allowed us to arrest him and then prosecute him, said former Suffolk County District Attorney Thomas J. Spada. Three years later, a Suffolk County jury found him guilty of two counts of second-degree murder. How is Bitloroth, Bitroth connected to the Long Island serial killer, you may ask? Well, the Long Island serial killer also dubbed the Gilgo Beach killer and the Craigslist Ripper. That's what it started off as, because all of these girls were had ads on Craigslist. For years, police were unable to make an arrest in the case. However, a breakthrough came in 2023, and authorities named Rex Hewerman as a suspect. I don't know how Rex Hewerman stayed off the radar all these years. It makes zero sense. Like, this new task force was brought in, and then all of a sudden, it's Rex Hewerman. Was someone protecting Rex Hewerman all this time? So we know that um, Rex was arrested and charged with the deaths of Melissa Bartholomew, who we just showed, Megan Waterman and Amber Lynn Costello. And Hewerman says, I did not do this. Before Hewerman was a suspect, police believed that Bit Rolf was the culprit because of his prior arrest. At first, then Suffolk County District Attorney Tom Spada dismissed the idea of him being the killer, saying there was no evidentiary or investigative link. So remember that. The then Suffolk County District Attorney dismissed him and said there was no links. None. I don't know. However, in 2017, former Suffolk County District Attorney Robert Bian Kavila suggested there could be. All kinds of confusion. There are remains of the victims at Gilgo that may be attributed to the handiwork, nice word, handiwork of Mr. Bitroth and that investigation is continuing despite beyond Kavila's previous suggestion he told Oxygen in 2021 that there was no evidence leaking Bitroth to the Long Island serial killer case and I have seen this man's face more in the last couple days looking into this than I can stand he's disgusting where is John Bitrolf now? After Bitrolf's conviction, he was sentenced to two consecutive sentences of 25 years to life by then Suffolk County Supreme Court Justice Richard Ambro. Ambro said these two murders are as brutal as anything I've ever seen. At this time, Bitrolf is serving out his sentence at Clinton Correctional Facility. It's a maximum security state prison for men located in the village of Danamora, New York. He will not be eligible until March 2064 for parole. He would be 98. 98. So that's who this dude is, okay? They originally thought he did it, but they had no evidence to say that he did. Now, let's fast forward here. This was posted... Here is John Bitroff in his perp walk back in 2014. Let me make this so you guys can see it better. There he is being labeled 
the Long Island serial killer at his uh, perp walk here. And it says Suffolk County District Attorney Raymond Turney ruled out Sunday night a long time theory that convicted Manorville murderer John Bit Rolfe could somehow be tied to the Long Island serial killer investigation. He has nothing to do with Lisk. <clears throat> That's what Tierney said. Bit Rolfe was convicted of killing Rita and Colleen, whom he hired as sex workers in late 93 and 94. Their bodies were found. This is where it gets weird. In the woods of eastern Suffolk County posed in a sexual position and missing their left shoes. Bit, Lof, Bit Rolf was tied to a third murdered woman, Sandra Castilla, but was never charged. This led to speculation that Bit Rolf, a married father of two, could be involved in the serial killer case, which involved the discovery of 10 sets of remains in the brush off Ocean Parkway in 2010 and 2011. Some of the victims had been dismembered. Two of the dismembered victims tied to Gilgo, Valerie Mack, and Jessica Taylor were initially discovered in Manorville where Bit Rolf lived. Mack was found in 2000 and Taylor in 03. Taylor's killer had tried to gouge a distinctive tattoo from her body that said, Remy's Angel. Miss Robin's cat's angel. Just kidding. Both Mack and Taylor had their heads and hands removed from their bodies and were tied up. These remains were found along Ocean Parkway in 2011 during the Gilgo serial killer investigation. Monday marked the 13th anniversary of the first discovery on Ocean Parkway. That's today. That's today. And then two days later, the remains of Megan Waterman, Maureen Brain Brainerd Barnes, and Amber Costello were found close by. So what they're saying here is a lot. This is this is big. And I'm going to tell you why I think it's big. Thank you so much, Shell, for your super sticker. Or super chat. Super chat. Super chat. Thank you so much, Shell. Mimi. Okay. So how coincidental that her body is linked to him, John, but the other three are linked now to Rex Hewerman. And then don't forget, we have two victims that include a toddler and a man dressed in women's clothing. Okay, so that is where my clips come in and all of these awesome people on YouTube have so much good information, including Catch Lisk from Twitter. So that brings us to our next set of clips and discussion. And let me get your chat highlights up here. Y'all are getting robbed. You didn't tell me you couldn't see the chat highlight. There we go. Thank you, Michelle. There you are. I thought it was showing. Okay. So let's get into some of these clips. I'm going to introduce... Um, who this is and everything. I just think we're extremely lucky to have investigators and ex-law enforcement and things like that on our platform now to get their take. So I'm sure I'm going to hack his name. I looked it up and I practiced. But you guys know how I am with names. Let me... It's Joseph Jack Jack alone. Jack alone. Joseph Jack alone. Tell me if I'm saying it right. I always get things wrong when I pronounce Joseph Jack alone. He is, um, I believe, retired NYPD. I don't know all of his credentials off the top of my head, but I did put his um, link in the description of the video because I feel like this channel is way underrated. Way underrated. When I see people are watching like bimbos telling you a story that they didn't even write 
and this dude's getting like a thousand views on this groundbreaking information. There's something wrong. Something wrong. So check out this channel. Subscribe to it because it's going to keep you in the loop. But I've got some clips for us right now. So let's start with the first one. Now on the same criminal procedural law is even more interesting. Oh, wait. Hold up. Hold up. That's the wrong one. All these newspapers. John Bitroff was also scheduled. Okay, so John Bitroff was supposed to be in court today. I guess I should have. Yay, globalism. I said it right. Thank you for letting me know. Um, so John Bitroff was supposed to be in court today. So this, he did, Joe did this video yesterday, I believe. And he was like, this guy's going to be in court tomorrow. Like, what's going on? He's already been convicted He's sitting in jail. Like, what would they be bringing him into court for? Well, it's a motion to dismiss the two charges, the two second degree murder charges. Why, you may ask. So he was also supposed to be in court back in November, but Joe's going to fill us in on that as well. Take a listen. John Bitroff was also scheduled on November 13th for a court date. That I can't find anybody mentioning it anywhere. I went to the local newspaper, Newsday. I ran it in there. I couldn't find it. Long Island Press. There's a Riverhead Times. All of these cases, all, excuse me, all these newspapers that are kind of, you know, just, just Suffolk County and specifically all the way out on the South Fork of Suffolk County. And, and that's what we call it for those of you that don't live on Long Island or don't know on Long Island. We have two forks. You have a North Fork and a South Fork. These murders, including all the Gilgo, would be considered towards the south part of Long Island. Uh, no mention of his expected court case in the 13th, and it was adjourned. Now, the court case tomorrow also now has adjourned next to it, right? So Raul pointed that out to me before, that it also has adjourned, but it doesn't have any other information on it, like judge's name and this and that. Tomorrow's case is supposed to be in front of Judge Richard Ambro in part five. Um, this now becomes a real big problem for the invest. All right, let's continue. We've got more. I think I went out of turn, though. <laughs> I apologize. I've got three clips. Here's the second one. The G1 now on the same criminal procedural law. He's reading the motion to dismiss, and he's pointing out two key points, okay? So he's reading the, the motion to dismiss that was supposed to be heard today. But now it's been adjourned again. The G1 now on the same criminal procedural law is even more interesting. It's Hold on. It didn't switch. The G1 now on the same criminal procedural law is even more interesting. It says forensic DNA testing of evidence performed since the entry of judgment, one, in the case of the defendant convicted after a guilty plea, the court has determined that the defendant has demonstrated a substantial probability that has defendants was actually innocent of the offense which he or she was convicted, or what? two, in the case of a defendant convicted after a trial, the court has determined that there is existence a reasonable probability that the verdict would have been more favorable to the defendant. And I'm going to fill his next word was wow. Wow. So they're saying the DNA ultimately, I think what they're saying is that the DNA is ultimately going to clear him. And they're not making this big news because they don't want it all over, right? They don't want, I mean, if this guy sat in prison, and I mean, his DNA was on the victims, but how do we know he didn't just hire them? How do we know he's not just a scuzzy guy who does that? We don't. We don't. And then we have the issue of Asa's, Miss Asa and her sex parties with her husband and her DNA. Her DNA is on the victims as well. Her hair. It's bonkers. It's totally bonkers. All right, we've got another clip from Joe. Let's take a listen to this one.
I'm gonna pretend I have a I'm gonna pretend I have a, a producer here. Hey, um Hey Maestro, roll roll reel number three. John Bitroff was also scheduled on November thirteenth for a court date that I can't find anybody mentioning it anywhere. I went to the local newspaper, Newsday. I ran it in there. I couldn't find it. Long Island Press. There's a Riverhead Times. All of these cases, all, excuse me, all these newspapers that are kind of, you know, just, just Suffolk County and specifically all the way out on the South Fork of Suffolk County. And, and that's what we call it for those of you that don't live on Long Island or don't know Long Island. We have two forks. You have a North Fork and a South Fork. These murders, including all the Gilgo, would be considered towards the South part of Long Island. Uh, no mention of his expected court case in the 13th, and it was adjourned. Now, the court case tomorrow Which is also today. now has adjourned next to it, right? So Raul pointed that out to me before, that it also has adjourned, but it doesn't have any other information on it, like judge's name and this and that. Tomorrow's case is supposed to be in front of Judge Richard Ambro in part five. Um, this now becomes a real big problem for the investigation. All right, this is, and this is our last clip. I just played them all again in the correct order for you guys. Here we go. You could do everything you need to do with him still in jail. You don't have to do anything. He's in jail. He's not going anywhere. You could do a Zoom meeting with him if there was something else that comes up, and that's it. So the fact that this is in person, I think, has a lot of interest for a lot of different people. Now, I reached out to some other people. And everybody that I know of, including some people in the media, were totally unaware of this. So this has been kind of been done, um, you know, below the radar kind of thing. So this is um, this has some really big implications. I mean, huge. I don't know. What does that tell you guys? I think that criminal med, I think you're definitely onto something. I think this man is being cleared by DNA and that he didn't do it. Can you imagine if that's what it is? You've got this man. I mean, yeah, it's gross to hire sex workers, but everyone's entitled to do what they want to do. He was married with two kids. And I haven't had a chance to look into this, like if his family ever spoke out, if his wife ever did any interviews. Because I really didn't follow the Long Island serial killer until Rex Huerman's arrest. That was when it got my attention. So I really would like to look more into this guy's arrest because this might all be turned around and this might have Rex Huerman all over it. I mean, three of the victims that Rex Huerman is charged in their murders were found right next to one of the victims that this dude is charged with. I mean, this is huge, if true. He huge, huge. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to take to the Twitters for a minute, and we're going to look at some of the postings there because my whole description of my video got ruined. I had everything set up so nicely with tags and everything, and it got ruined. So I want to show you guys some of the postings on X before we get into Asa and her whole mess and what we think about that. So let's take a gander here. This is catch list and look at the look at their profile picture. I mean, it's just the extensive work they've done for this case is crazy. So we're gonna take a look at catch list Twitter and see if anything's new today, this morning, since I've and look at four thousand followers. Get over there and follow them. Researcher advocate data geek. Facts matter catch list. I mean, this person has done so much work. Okay, so here we go. 14 minutes ago. See, I told you. This is where you get your news. Um, Looks like John Bitroff adjournment is rescheduled for 1-8-2024. 
putting in a PTO request now, LOL. So this is when he's due back. See this? 11-13, set aside, vacate judgment. 12-11, set aside, vacate judgment. 1-8 now, set aside, vacate judgment. Guys, we have to follow this. This is huge, huge. January the 8th. Joe was being vague because of YouTube. Yeah, he doesn't. He said he didn't want to speculate. He said, I'll let others do that. I'm like, I'll take it. I'll take it. Hey, vet girl. Nice to see ya. Hope you had a good Thanksgiving. Oh, wow, globalism. So you're like the pro on this. If I get anything wrong, let me know because I'm just diving into this, but. This is a wealth of information here. Um, I'll show you the other post. And then you have that commissioner. There's stuff going on with him. Okay, so it says here, update, Suffolk DA Ray Tierney says John Bitroth will not be in court Monday. The defense motion to vacate Bitroth's 2017 murder convictions has been adjourned. Pending a response from prosecutors, Bitroth's team says they didn't get all, he didn't get all the evidence. And this is Mary Murphy from PIX News. Picks 11. She's the one that I actually showed this. She's the one that broke this story. That it's that it's not connected. She broke this um, just this morning at 1042 a.m. This is hot off the press, guys. Hot off the press. And this is actually the video I watched that I'm going to give you guys the direct link to. Because this is roughly 17 minutes long, but I would rather you guys watch it on his channel because I feel like this channel is so, so underrated. Right. Okay, that girl. Yeah, we're going to get into Asa right now, actually. I wanted to I wanted to cover this though because like I said when I was researching for today's live I was like wait a minute there's so much more to this than meets the eye right so there's the link to this exact video if you would like to watch it I I suggest you do cuz it's really really good and You know, and he, this catch list, he is following all kinds of unsolved cases as well to follow up and see if any of them, you know, link to Hewerman. So that is huge news, guys. And we'll see what happens with that. So January the 8th is the day. The day. So moving into our next portion of the live. We're going to be talking about if I only had a quarter, if I only had a quarter, I'd be showing you this Newsday article. So we're going to have to find another one because I'm not subscribed. So we should be able to find it rather easy. Asa Ellerup DNA. Ugh. This woman, this woman Let's do a poll. Hey, beautiful Auntie Cheryl. And if you can't read the poll, I'll read it to you and you can vote. So we're having issues with polls. Hopefully the polls work. Cross your fingers that they work today. Do you think Asa Ellerup? is involved in any of the murders in any way and when I ask that it's 
you know, with the disposal, with some weird sex thing going on. I don't know how you can have like handcuffs in a secret room and freaking keys to the handcuffs in your house. Your husband has all this shit going on in your house and you have no idea. So I'm going to read the, the, um, I'm going to read the Newsday one because I've got it on my phone. And it says, Cheek swab samples collected from the estranged wife of alleged Gilgo Beach serial killer, Rex A. Hewerman, match her DNA material found on the remains of some of the homicide victims. A law enforcement official told Newsday, a DNA sample from Asa Ellerup was taken on July 13th, the night her husband was arrested on charges, he killed three of the women whose remains were found near Gilgo Beach in 2010. Hewerman, 60, pleaded not guilty. I guess I don't, I can only read part of it on my phone. So anyways, we're going to look at this because this is probably the same stuff. No charges have been filed against Asa Ellerup. It's important to note. Okay, so earlier this month, we saw his wife attend his court hearing. She was met by a circus of cameras, and she was followed by a film crew. And we now found out that she's getting millions, a million dollar deal to do this documentary. And look at, look at my ads. It's crazy ad Monday. Look. Staying healthy at sun at 70. This is what your farting is telling you about lifespan. Look, this is AI at work. So fucking needed, right? Because we need this shit. We need these ads telling us that when we fart, we sound like we're 70 and we need help. No, Scott, he was put away for two to two second degree murder charges. Anyway. <laughs> Olive. <sighs> so here's the map and we have. We cannot forget about there was a toddler found, right? A toddler. So we have the toddler found up here and Valerie Mack right next to the toddler. Jessica Taylor, the Asian male who was dressed as a female, Megan Waterman, Wa Maureen Brainerd Barnes, Melissa Bartholomew, and Amber Lynn Costello. I don't know if these creeps work together or what. I'm not sure. Or if this was all the work of Rex Hewerman. Why can I not find more info about Asa? And she just looks like such a pleasant person, right? She looks so pleasant and distraught. I just, she thinks. I don't know. Let's watch this. Let me know what you think. Gilgo Beach serial killer matched her DNA material found on the remains of some of the victims. Investigators took a cheek swab from Asa Ellerup the night her husband Rex Hewerman was arrested in July. Now they say that her hair was found on the burlap in which victims were found wrapped in. Prosecutors have cleared her of any wrongdoing and said that she was out of town at the time of the murders. Okay, that's where I have a DNA sample taken. From I have a freaking problem with that. How do they know she was out of town at the time of the murders? How do they know that? They only know when the victims were found. How do they know when they were murdered? See, that seems sketchy to me. So are they saying that so Asa feels comfortable? Because if she does this whole deal and does this documentary and it turns out she had knowledge. She's going to look like an asshole. 
And I, you know, that's what I want to know. I have a whole bunch of notes on this. We're going to go over. Cause I'm just, uh, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, they don't exactly Tara mama. They don't know when they were killed. Hell, they hardly solved the case. Exactly globalism. She said Ace's hair on the bodies could be explained as transfer. But now she's been placed in the house or before the house even at a sex party, meeting a sex worker, taking her home to their house and then refusing to have sex because of the I don't even know what. But she was there and her hair is on the outside of burlap that they're wrapped in. So that would mean during the dumpage that her hair would get on the outside of the burlap. I mean, we're talking about burlap that sat in the weather in shiz. I don't know. I just I don't know what to make of this. It's crazy. It's crazy. So I want to open up this Daily Mail article and then I'm going to read some of my notes as well. I got so many thoughts on this. Let's see if I can't find that. Daily Mail had some really good pictures too from the search of his house. Let's see if I can't find it. I'm going to have to Google it. Daily Mail. Rex Hewerman. Search. Oh, his searches too are, are incredible when you think about the fact that there was um, a toddler found. Oh, another thing, not to not to change the subject, but to go back to this John Bitrolf. Did I mention that he was a carpenter by trade? Did I tell you that he was a carpenter by trade? Do you remember Rex Huerman saying his choice of tool or his tool of choice is a carpenter's hammer? Did he know? That this guy was going to get blamed? Hmm. Hold on. Where'd Lee interview go? With that realtor. Because that's where he said it. He said, my tool of choice is a carpenter's hand. Um, I have other clients who are a lot of other architects. Part of my job became educate the city. So you ed educate the city? He is so gross. You then move over did last year uh -huh. or somebody's co-op or a person have very bad days yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a mixing of building code okay all right my last question if you were a tool or an object to help you uh in your uh to help you to bring your business to greater heights what would it be that's an interesting question i know 
<laughs> because for what I do, we have to have so many tools in the toolbox. Uh, just one. Just one. Just one. Or an object. It doesn't have to be a tool. It can be an object. You know what? Yeah. I know. All right. One of the things I learned from my father was furniture building. Okay. He was an aerospace engineer and built satellites. <laughs> and Runs in the family, yeah? building <laughs> things. <laughs> and <laughs> built furniture at home. And I still build it in the same exact workshop. My God. I'm reading more into this that I didn't want to... I d what did Rex Huerman's dad do in that workshop? What did Rex Huerman's dad do in that workshop? Because he's acting fucking weird. His dad built satellites. That doesn't mean he knows how to make furniture. Because none of this story makes sense. He's a sick, sick motherfucker. Let's listen to that again. Let's listen to him talk about, because we, that workshop, look at his fingers. That workshop was in his, his home he grew up in. And the guy that's in jail that we think might be trying to get out and cleared on DNA is a carpenter by trade. This is so bizarre. Just one. Or an object. It doesn't have to be a tool. It can be an option. You know what? Yeah. I know. All right. One of the things I learned from my father was furniture building. Okay. He was an aerospace engineer and built satellites. <laughs> and Runs in the family, yeah? building <laughs> things. <laughs> and <laughs> built furniture at home. And I still build it in the same exact workshop. So? I have one tool that's pretty much used in almost every job. And it's actually a cabinet maker's hammer. Oh, okay, and Kevin needs to make a hammer. Okay. It is persuasive enough <laughs> when I need to persuade something. It Not someone. Something. <laughs> and it always... He loves this. He is a sick, sick individual. Yields excellent results. Yeah. And at the end of the project, whatever piece of furniture or what I'm working on, it always helps. It. Whatever piece of furniture or what I'm working on. Come out beautifully. Okay, great. So you would be kind of a, that kind of hammer for your, uh, for your business? That's what you're saying? You if that doesn't hammer? exist, that's what you would be? Sometimes I have to be the heavy framing hammer. <laughs> the heavy framing hammer. Other times I'm the lightweight hammer just to... <laughs> nudge things along all right i guess it's a hammer we got it that's it folks that was rex owner founder of rh consultant so if you have any he is sick can i play that part again is we broke it down now i want to hear it just straight through they're all so different and how you give you a tool it can be an option Oh, <laughs> because for what I do, we have to have so many tools in the toolbox. Uh, just one. Just one. Just one. Or an object. It doesn't have to be a tool. It can be an option. You know what? Yeah. I know. All right. One of the things I learned from my father was furniture building. Okay. He was an aerospace engineer and built satellites. <laughs> and Runs in the family, yeah? building <laughs> things. <laughs> and built furniture at home. And I still build it in the same exact workshop. So? I have one tool that's pretty much used in almost every job. And it's actually a cabinet maker's hammer. Can we, oh, okay, and cabinet maker hammer, okay. It is persuasive enough <laughs> when I need to persuade something. It Not someone. Something. <laughs> <laughs> and it always yields excellent results. Yeah. And at the end of the project, whatever piece of furniture or what I'm working on, it always helps it come out beautifully. Okay, great. So you would be kind of a, that kind of hammer for your, uh, for your business? That's what you're saying? You if have that doesn't exist, that's what you would be? Sometimes I have to be the... <laughs> Heavy framing hammer? <laughs> the heavy framing hammer. Other times I'm the lightweight hammer just to <laughs> nudge things along. All right. I mm. 
He is disgusting. Something or someone. Why am I just so absolutely disgusted? I think it's taught me more about how to understand people. Because dealing with the technical aspects yeah. is something a person can learn. Mm -hmm. You go to school and to an architectural program. You work for the experience. Ugh, just the way he breathes. That's an interesting question. I know. <laughs> and look at when he says, if you were a tool, what tool would you be? And he really enjoys this. He takes a, a second thought and he's like, it's an interesting question. I can use this question to get a to get a dig in because like someone else said, he's busting at the seams. He's busting at the seams with all these murders that he's done. Look at his eyes, the devil. The devil is dancing tonight with this one. The devil is dancing tonight. And we all know he was a mama's boy. It's been reported that he was a mama's boy. Last question. If you were a tool or an object to help you uh, Watch his mannerisms. in your, uh, to help you to bring your business to greater heights, what would it be? That's an interesting question. I know. <laughs> because for what I do, we have to have so many tools in the toolbox. Uh, just one. Just one. Just one. Or an object. It doesn't have to be a tool. It can be an object. You know what? Yeah. I know. All right. One of the things I learned from my father was furniture building. Okay. He was an aerospace engineer and built satellites. <laughs> and... Runs in the family, eh? building <laughs> things. <laughs> and <laughs> built furniture at home. And I still build it in the same exact workshop. So? I have one tool that's pretty much used in almost every job. And it's actually a cabinet maker's hammer. Cabin oh, okay. And Cabinet's maker hammer. Okay. It is persuasive enough <laughs> when I need to persuade something. It, Not someone. Something. <laughs> and, and he laughs. He la oh, he is so gross. All right, I might really creep you guys out, but I'm going to slow it down a little bit more because I want to see his reaction when he says something. Someone. Something. <laughs> yeah, he's he's mental. This guy is this guy is very very dangerous. I'm telling you, he is one dangerous mofo. I can't take it. It's persuasive enough <laughs> when I need to persuade something. It, Not someone. Something. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and it always yields excellent results. Yeah. And at the end of the project, whatever piece of furniture or what I'm working on, it always helps it come out beautifully. Okay, great. So you would be... He goes beautifully, like a circle. It always comes out beautifully. Is he talking about their heads? Because I'm telling you, man, I'm, I'm not reading too much into this. This dude's a sick, sick motherfucker. And look at how he's got his hands. Can you imagine his hands around their necks? Those little tiny girls? Whatever piece of furniture or yeah, what that's I'm not how you work on, on furniture. It always helps it come out beautifully. Okay, great. So you would be 
kind of a, that kind of hammer for your uh, for your business. That's what you're saying. You if that doesn't yeah. exist. That's what you would be. Sometimes he's so proud of himself. Sometimes I have to be the <laughs> heavy framing hammer. The heavy framing hammer. Other times I'm the lightweight hammer, just to. <laughs> <laughs> Nudge things along. <laughs> All right. I guess. Persuade. It's persuasive enough. Clip what? Which part, James? It's nuts, isn't it? Okay, so enough on that. I know we're all over the place, but back to Asa. Asa. This is what Asa looked like when Rex, when they were going to their sex parties and stuff. This is Asa, I guess, when Rex still found her attractive. But my question is, and look at this skinny AI ad. Sick. This is our future, guys. Um, They're saying that she's not going to be charged because she was not there. And I'm sure that's what she told them. Like, oh, I got to give a cheek swab. Oh, well, I was in Green Iceland. Oh, I was in New Jersey. Oh, I was somewhere else. I think that's what's going on. Um, So she went to these sex parties with Rex. We know at least on one occasion, a sex worker was brought back to the house. And that sex worker is now deceased. So we also know that Asa's hair, that hair that you see right there, was found on the outside burlap of the victims that were dumped. We know this woman went to sex parties. We know that she okayed bringing people back to the house. Why are we dismissing that she could be involved? I'm not dismissing it because I think it's it's possible. Let's see what Snazzy Trinkets Jewelry has to say. Thank you for your $10 super chat, by the way. I have a lot of questions about Rex's brother, Craig. Many unsolved murders in North Carolina and South Carolina, like my friend Beth Ellen. You had a friend that was murdered. I'm so sorry. I feel like the brothers kept score amongst themselves. Interesting. I, too, think that something's going on. Didn't they also have identical trucks, Snazzy? And I'm not familiar with your friend Beth Ellen, but if you would ever like to come on the podcast and talk about your friend's unsolved murder, um, you have an open platform here, honey. But I do think that Craig is sketch as well he actually was in a drunk driving accident when he was young Craig Hewerman and I think someone died if I'm not mistaken did he hit a trooper or something? I can't remember the whole story but there's a lot more to this guys I think this runs deep through a lot of states we just did the route route the route 29 stalker yesterday um, but it's important, too, that we remember that this John um, Bitroff's victims were missing a shoe. What if they found a shoe? What if they found the, the shoes in the Rex Hewerman search? What if that happened? What if they recovered a shoe? I'm trying to find those images of the search at Rex's house. Here's his, here's his Google searches. I wasn't going to bring that up, but now that we found them, which I know I've seen them and I had them, but talking about the, um, the Asian victim. Oh, also Rex Googled John bit Rolf's name. Rex Googled John Bitroff's name. So these are some of the searches that Rex Hewerman made on his computer. Why could law enforcement not trace the calls made by the Long Island serial killer? 
Why hasn't the Long Island serial killer been caught? Long Island killer. Long Island serial killer phone call. Long Island serial killer update. Update 2022. FBI active serial killers. Serial killers by state. 2023. Map of all known serial killers. Unsolved serial killer cases. America's five most notorious old cases. 11 currently active. I'm just going to say SK because it's redundant. SKs. Eight terrifying active SKs we can't find. John Bitroff, but he spelled it wrong. See that? John, he spelled it B-I-T-R-O-F-F. It's B-I-T-R-O-L-F-F. Megan Waterman, Melissa Bartholomew, Maureen Brainerd Barnes. Redacted, name of relative of Melissa. Redacted, name of relative of Megan. He was stalking the victim's families as well. Cops Lodge, Gilgo Beach Homicide Investigation Task Force, mapping the Long Island murder victims inside the Long Island, serial killer and Gilgo Beach, the Gilgo Beach killer criminal minds in Long Island serial killer investigation. New phone technology may be key to break in case. Zoinks. Here are some more of his Google searches. This is really, really gross. Mistress, Long Island, Mature Escorts, Manhattan, Girl Begging for Rape Porn, Teen Girl Begging for Rape Porn, Pretty Girl with Bruised Face Porn, Torture Redhead Porn, 10-year-old schoolgirl, just 10-year-old schoolgirl, just straight up a 10-year-old, that's all you search for, 10-year-old schoolgirl, gross. What does that say? What? Something plump, pussy, lips. What does that say? Does that say hernia? Wait a second. What does that say? Henta, plump, pussy, lips, cut off porn? <gasps> oh, oh. MG, is that some kind of a mutation? Oh my God. What is that? Is that mutation? Okay, and then he has, um, oh man, this is sick. Skinny redhead tied up prawn, short fat girl tied up prawn. Tied up and raped prawn. Asian twink tied up prawn. Um, tied slave force fed cock. Cum shot and crying prawn. Girl hog tied torture prawn. Torture prawn. Girl hog-tied torture prawn, 10-year-old blonde hair girl, chubby 10-year-old girl, black girl 10 years old. What is with his obsession with 10 years old? Scott, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Girl with face beat up. Yeah, because that's, that's a turn on. Chubby 10-year-old girl crying. 13-year-old schoolgirl, age 12, child girl with blonde hair and blue eyes. Blonde hair girl, young, depressed. Teen girl, oiled bodies. Pre-teen girl with makeup. Nude slave girls. Yeah, let's not, Briggs. We'll just, we'll just uh, guess on that one. That is beyond messed up here is rex back in the sex party days like oh yeah baby gross him and asa were up to no good and i have no doubt that she knew exactly what was going on in the basement when she wasn't down there i just cannot believe that she wouldn't know that so all right here's some pictures <clears throat> this is, I'm going to go off camera and blow these up. That's what she said. 
But um, I'm going to blow these up so we can take a look at the searches and what they may have found here. All right, interesting overhead view here. See all this shiz down here? They've got tents. I mean, they're going through all this stuff. What if they found those shoes, guys? Look at all the shit they had to go through. And this lady's like, oh, they left my house a mess. Asa. Asa says, they left my house a mess. We can't even live in it. We need to go fund me. Now, I could see if Asa was truly in the dark and it was never done in their home. There was, no, you know, very little evidence in the home of anything bad going on or anything sinister going on. I could see, you know, a victim's advocate stepping in and going, hey, Miss Ellerup, we're here to help you get back on your feet. But this woman was attending sex parties and bringing sex workers back to the house. I'm sorry. There's more to it. And I just don't think that, you know, these and I'm not saying anything bad about the girl that the serial killer's daughter, but it's like it, they're making it about them and their healing. But they really need to be careful about who they're portraying as a victim and who they're not, because they think when a case is not fully done being investigated and we know that there's her DNA on three victims three not just one not just one but three and she gets a gofundme and sympathy and then a million dollar deal fuck that no way i just think that there's a lot of emotions and then these kids of serial killers come out and they want to like help and try to heal themselves and it just, it can come out, the, it can just, they can be taken advantage of. And, and I just think we have to be careful because there's too much to this, to this case here, in my opinion. So here are some more photos. Let's take a look. This is the New York Post. And if you think back on the searches we just talked about, shit, I didn't mean to do that. I didn't do that either. Bear with me a sec, guys. Sorry. We have some more um, Munjay ads that are going to come up too. You'll get a kick out of. There we go. She wanted the $300,000 worth of guns. Yeah. Oh, they just switched. Lucky for you guys. The ads just switched. Let's make this. God, I've got it all zoomed in. Hold on. Hold jaw horses. Ooh, I'm locking up. I'm getting frozen here. There we go. Are you guys buffering at all? I hope not. I might have to close some windows if you are. Let me get rid of those. Okay. Okay, so here we have... Some pretty good pictures. There are a bunch of banker boxes with files and things in them. We're going to blow this up more. Because this is super interesting to me. Okay, so what does he have in all these banker boxes, I wonder? They went through all these boxes of papers and all kinds of stuff. Here's the avalanche they took off. Here's another picture of the search. These aren't the ones I wanted, though. The ones I wanted were on Daily Mail. I'm going to have to find them. I think this one's it. Oh, the doll is creepy. 
the freaking picture of the blonde little girl is creepy. All right, here's 13 photos from the Daily Mail. Maybe these are the ones I saw. I can't find it in my history either. It's ticking me off. Okay, guys, let's take a closer look. This is where we do our J Zoom. Okay, that's what I'm calling it. The J Zoom feature of this channel. This is where they're digging up the backyard. God knows what they found back there. I don't know what that thing is on the ground. Do you guys? It says a forensic photographer is seen bending over the tray of objects. Oh, that's a tray of objects excavated from the backyard of Huerman's house. But they say nothing of note was discovered in the backyard. I'm, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. I think they found lots of stuff, especially if his family lived there their whole life. It's the family home. Come on. Cops use ground penetrating radar. See, they marked it. They definitely found stuff, guys. Let's watch the video. Oh, my God. Look at this. If you have toenail fungus, try this tonight. Fuck you, AI. Are you kidding me right now? Hey, Shell. Good to see you. We're just waiting for this advert. 20 minutes of someone's toes with hemorrhoid cream on them. Nice. But here's some video, guys. This is interesting stuff. This is brought to us by the Daily Mail. They used ground penetrating radar and then dug it up, but they're saying it was nothing of note. These people even have a greenhouse. What the hell? Tokens from victims, Punani says. I always <laughs> toothpaste on toes. <gasps> Toothpaste on toes and whiskers on kittens. Scott Briggs says he grew five extra toes with that junk. Oh my gosh, that is so funny. How do you think I feel, Angie? I get these all the time. I just can't even imagine everything they pulled out of this house. This is while they were processing the scene before they started digging. So they use this ground penetrating radar. Look at all of the marks. All the orange marks are where they were finding things. <laughs> Scott. But they say nothing of note was found. Do you guys believe that? I never started the poll. There, I just put it up. I thought I hit it. I never started it. Yeah, they pinpointed exactly where they wanted to dig. And look at the cellar door. How creepy. Welcome in, CEO Ultra Dark. That girl says the yard looks better. She should have thanked him. Right? <laughs> And here's where they're actually tearing the house apart. Let's watch this. This is also brought to you by Daily Mail. But now we're getting a hymns ED. So I guess I guess I have erectile dysfunction as well. That's news to me. AI. Fuck directly off. 
<coughs> Make no. And I love how they play that with Rex Hewerman video. Like, how gross. Here they're collecting stuff. Let's hold on. Let's zoom in more if we can. What's your big deal offering? What the hell? Why is there a kid there? <laughs> hold on, hold on. Let's pause it. Let's pause it. Oh, we can't see when we pause it. OMG. Are you kidding? Can we slow it down? We can't. Darn it. I don't know. There's audio during part of this and audio not. But here they're bringing a bunch of wood. I don't know what they're doing. They have their sights marked in this one. There definitely had to be something of interest back there. Thank you, Globalism999. Super chat. Jay, I'll send you a couple interviews this week, including one from Amber Costello's friend and roommate who gave the description of RH 13 years ago and how they ended up finding him. Is he the guy with the beard and the red hair? I have seen his interview. Yes. Um, thank you, Globalism, for your super chat and for your information. All right, here's the actual dig. Over the weekend, police also dismantled. Okay, this is what it says. Police dismantled a wooden deck at the house. They yelled lift and brought it up in one piece as if it was a cover. This is per a neighbor. The porch was replaced by a white tent. Investigators with shovels could be seen scraping through the freshly upturned earth. Harrison said the room in Hureman's basement was not soundproof, but confirmed it had extremely thick walls. All right, now we're going to watch them do the dig. This is creepy as heck. Looks like a pretty precise dig to me. They ain't fooling nobodies. God, look at those people, their patios. Like, look at the fence, the back fence. Look how close people live to these people. Yes. The, yep, I heard that too, Scott. Concrete walls were specifically poured to be thicker than normal. Did he do that or did his father? I think it's interesting. He wasn't close with his father, yet he says the skills he got that he remembers from his father is being in that workroom. The workroom where he probably dismembered and murdered people.
Here's some more photos. We got 14 of them here. Oh my God. I mean, straight up lifted the whole deck. The entire deck, they lifted it up in one piece, guys. Oh, there was one article, though. See, look at this. I mean, really? Why do, you, why do I get shown this stuff? He was 11 when he passed. He was in a service-type job. He said he built... He said he built satellites. Is that even true? I'm trying to find the stuff they brought out. Because there was a note of like 10 things they found. And now I can't find it. Okay, maybe this will be it. There's some of the firearms they're carrying out. Bins. What is in those guns? I wonder if they found those shoes too of those girls. Damn. What the heck is that you think? What in the world? One item that the police carried out was so large, it needed two men to carry it. New York State police officers move a metal cabinet. There's a bag of evidence. God, they had some really good pictures in this other article. I wish I could find it. They were zooming in and I was like, oh my gosh. They're doing the zoom. They're doing the zoom. But I'm interested. So vote in the in the poll, you guys, and let me know if you think that Asa could be involved in this in some way, shape, or form. Okay, here's some more photos. I'm trying to find the pictures of the... Oh, what the heck is that? What is this? A cat house? Is that a cat house? There's the picture of the bl the little blonde girl. Look. Oh, her face is beat up. Oh, her face. She has black. Oh, my God, you guys. She has black eyes. She has black eyes. 
in this picture. Mm. That's just, that's so disturbing. Is there another picture of that? Dude, it's a it's a picture of a young girl that has black eyes. There's his son with a dog bed and dog dishes. Lord have mercy. Mm. And look at these neighbors. They're like, what the fuck is going on in my neighborhood? Here's another one. Just bags full of shit. They're garbage. Ew. Here's more. There's like a random little Caesars box. That's a recliner chair with all kinds of shit. A freaking, uh, what do you call those things? A treadmill. This must be the basement where they did their entertaining. There's more. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I don't know how CNN got these photos. But here's more. Oh, my God. Okay, so let's find that picture. I'm getting in a rabbit hole. Um, picture Rex Hewerman. Little girl. This is sick. And the doll is creepy too. Uh, let's see. Workbench. What is this? What does this say? can't read it can you guys read that <laughs> what kind of a work bent what is that what, what would that be it looks like a I don't know what the heck that is No, he didn't bring important people to this house. He brought sex workers home, him and his wife, and their kinky shit. How did he meet her anyway if she lived in Iceland? Did he meet her? Was she also a sex worker? This freaking Asa? I mean, how did they meet if she grew up in, and lived in Iceland? How, do, how does one meet someone from Iceland? Santa's workbench? Oh, for God's sakes. I wonder if Santa also had a carpenter's hammer. And then, if you take into consideration also, he looked up like redhead prawn and like all redhead kind of stuff and his wife and his daughter have red hair and his daughter allegedly worked with him 
That's weird too. Here's his bathtub. They cut it out. And she's mad. She can still shower in there. I know. Iceland. It doesn't even it doesn't even make sense. And it's like his daughter thought she was like some star or something. It's weird. Look at this photo of her. I'm not saying anything bad, but shit. You cannot live in that house and come out normal. There's got to be weird shit going on there. I mean, is this for his website or something? And what did she do for his business? Does anybody even know? You know, did she ride the train with him? Did she go to work with him? Does she have any information about, you know, when her father did these things? I mean, it's a legit question. And until all of this is figured out and all of these women who were murdered have some justice, I don't think we can necessarily feel sorry this is another weird thing for people who lived in that home knowing what they took out of this home I could see if it would be like oh my god he like truly was living a second life and no one knew But that's not the case. They probably got more evidence from his home than they did his business. So is his daughter helping the investigation? Where do they stand? What's going on? I think people need to know where it stands before they start donating money to GoFundMes for someone who may have killed numerous, numerous, numerous women in numerous states. If you take into consideration his searches and look at the things they brought out of his house, it's so disturbing. There's the doll. He's got a doll in a glass case. What? Look at this. Yeah, I just don't know how you meet someone when you're in Long Island and you're an architect, how you meet a woman that lives in Iceland and bring her home and marry her and be like, this is my wife and we're going to attend sex parties and she's just down with it. No, there's more to this Asa or Essa, whatever the hell she wants to be called, than meets the eye. I mean, look at this. Not normal by any stretch of the imagination. Not normal. This, not normal. I don't know if it's some kind of German movie. Let's zoom in and see what the hell that says. Something Eckenstein... I'm sure Mega, make everything great again, will be all over it. And Mega, you do. You make everything great again around here. Great town, dude. Little girl looks like Summer Wells, for Christ's sake. It says something collection. Let's zoom in more. The... Something collection. I can't read it. But yeah. It doesn't say Frankenstein. Let me see if I can. It's E-C-H-T-E-N Stein. E-C-H-T-E-N Stein. Wait. E-C-H-T-E-N Okay, so Eckenstein is in 
Amsterdam. Um, what else does it say? Oh, Leckenstein. L I E. It's in Germany and Austria, but hmm. Hetelia? Oh, is this the freaking porn he was looking up? Oh, dear God in heaven. Look. Remember he did that search for pussy lips? Look. Is that an artist, Licken Lickenstein? Remember he looked up Hi Hatelia? This is Hatelia. This is an anime character. It's a freaking anime character. Oh my God. Oh my God. People dress up like this. <gasps> this is freaking disturbing. Lord have mercy. What is AI going to do for freaks like this? For freaks that get off on anime? What is AI going to going to going to do? He's into German porn. Look at this. <gasps> this is Hetelia. Roy Lichtenstein. Roy, let's see. Thank you, Scott. Okay, so this is the guy who draws those. This is the drawler. This is the drawler. So it looks like he's done a lot of like comic book stuff. I'm just not seeing Rex's poster. Here he is older. Roy Lichtenstein. I'm just going to put blonde girl. God, I feel disgusting even searching for this. I just don't see that poster that Rex has. This is all like cartoons. I'm just trying to figure out what that poster is from. Is it? Because I don't see anything with real, like looking real like that, like. It's all stuff like this. See, like I see that. But I don't see any. I don't see what Rex had and that's kind of what I'm looking for. I'm just not finding anything like that. It's just so weird. He drew this. Now, 
No, I'm not saying this guy did anything. I'm just trying to find the poster that Rex Hewerman had that has this man's name on it. I just see a lot of girls crying. Yeah, I don't know. Ugh. That is just some nasty stuff. Um, okay, so back to Asa. Asa. Let me come back to the camera. Oh, look at this blank. Oh, my God. Where'd she go? There I am. All right. So I've got another clip from. Who is this? Oops. I told you guys this was going to be a long one today. Thanks for sticking around. It's a lot to unpack here. Okay. So this is, I believe he's the um, new chief. I might have that wrong. I get confused. But anyway, this is what he had to say about Elsa. When Elsa or Asa, Elsa, Asa. I'm thinking of Frozen. <laughs> okay, this is what he had to say about Asa. And this was her attitude about the DNA being taken from her cheek swab. Harrison tells us Hewerman's wife was surprised when she was told her husband had been arrested. When we told the, the, the wife, she was shocked, she was embarrassed. Um, but there was a point where uh, we showed her certain uh, pictures and uh, she said, okay, it is what it is. Okay, no, she was in denial about her husband being arrested. And then he says, we showed her certain pictures. And this is, and this is Asa. It is what it is. Who says that? <laughs> the wife, she was shocked. She was embarrassed. Um, but there was a point where uh, we showed her certain uh, pictures and uh, she said, okay, it is what it is. Harrison says the department gets 10 to 15 tips. A Harrison. It is what it is. What kind of an attitude is that? What kind of an attitude is that? Oh, it is what it is. That's not the sounds of someone who gives a damn that there's these girls. That Thank you so much, Mega. That these girls were killed. And that all of this evidence is coming out of her home. The Princely Collection. Thank you. I knew you'd find it. From Rubens to McCart. The Princely Collections. Thank you so much, Megs. Okay, here it is in its entirety. Give lots of love to Mega and chat. Here we go. This is it. That's what Rex Hewerman had in his house. And, you know, I mean, it's just art. But when it's coming out of a serial killer's house with the disgusting searches, she looks like she's been beat up. Why does she have marks all over her face? What does this mean? She has a black eye. Look at the bruising on this on this child's face in this painting. It's just not okay. Why is she beat up? And why do her eyes look borderline like she's got Down syndrome or something? Something just... That being in Rex Hewerman's house 
I don't know if it's a boy or a girl. It looks like a little girl, but I don't know. From Rubens to McCart. Yeah, and sad. There's just... It could be the art form, but it's just coming out of his home is disturbing, right? We're looking at it from a serial killer who searches prawn for little kids and wants their faces beat up and stuff. So Jerry, I get it. I get that art is, you know, eccentric, but we're talking about, we're talking about Rex Hewerman enjoying art. It's just gross. It looks normal. <laughs> yeah. Totally normal for a serial killer to have these Google searches and then have a beat up. And he's German, too. Rex is German. So, I don't know. Princely collection? A young prince who's being abused? Is that what happened there? I don't know. And, you know, just because it's art and this person's famous doesn't mean that they're not demented, too. I mean, let's just put that out there. It doesn't mean they're not demented, too. Ugh. Hundreds of people must have been with Rex under longer periods of time. Where are they? The princely art treasures of Lichtenstein have finally gone on show for the first time since they were hidden away when the Nazis annexed Austria in 1938. The Lichtenstein princely family has spent $23 million on turning one of their Venice palaces into a gallery, and the result is a triumph. Thank you for all of that information, Megs. Mega? It's just a little bit scary. Serial killers kind of freak me out a little bit. Just a little bit. So are you guys ready for our going out video? We have covered a lot of stuff today. Let's see the results of our poll. 83%. It sure does. Ember, the little baby, the toddler. I have a I have a premiere in two hours coming up for you guys too. But we have a going out video if you guys want to have a little bit um better mood on your way out because this shit's heavy, dude. This this case right here is messed up. So I've got a cute little video. We've got puppies. Everybody loves puppies. We got a major cute alert here. We do have a major cute alert. So puppies, puppies everywhere. We're going to watch some puppies. I want to thank you guys for being here. Give this video a like if you haven't already. If you did already, thank you. And hopefully I'll see you back at 7 p.m. You're going to watch me and Potato and our girl HJ who isn't here anymore. I mean, she's here, but not here, here. But we go over some um, pretty cool album covers and the weird art behind them. You're not going to want to miss it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, let's get our puppies up on the stage here. Puppies, puppies everywhere. Let's watch them because we just don't care. Asa Ellerup. Hopefully, if she is involved, justice will prevail, right? All right, let's watch some puppies. These puppies Acuteness. escape. It is a big day, by the way, also for nonprofits all across Minnesota. Oh, I have to read now. Yeah, you focus. do. Yeah. Today, your donations go even further. Today marks the 15th anniversary. Wait of for it. They escape. They want to. It is a great chance to rally and fundraise around more than 35,000 organizations across the state. Yeah, we're trying to help you and your siblings. One of those nonprofits is Rough Start Rescue. So this morning, we're joined Look by the them. founder. Watch, Asher they're going to escape the and fence. And of course, a boatload of cute puppies. 
You got a, you brought a lot. And we have nine, <laughs> nine, one and they're letter. all from one letter. Yes. Wow. Yes. I know, we'll have to try to stay focused because this is a lot of cuteness. Right, okay, well, why don't you get, get the story, their story out of the way and, and what kind of dogs they are and, and are they up for adoption? Yes, so they will be up for adoption. Okay. So what happened was the mom actually was found in Minneapolis and she was in really rough shape. When she came in, very, very pregnant, scars all over her body, obviously went through a lot of trauma. Aww, and so she gave mama. birth while she was in the rescue. And Aww. unfortunately, she just didn't want anything to do with the puppies. I think because of all the trauma she went through herself. Poor um, mama. And so she's amazing herself she actually just got adopted so that's Aww. wonderful um, the puppies they will be up for adoption we'll have them on the website probably December 1st early December okay um, they'll actually be available to go home mid-December once they're spayed and neutered and old enough um, but because the mom wasn't able to take care of them our volunteers what? are foster stepped they're in so and they smart have been what? feeding all nine of these puppies around oh the clock look at their like let's do it day. so just to give you an idea we added it up the other day it costs about hundred and twenty five dollars a day to feed them with formula and potty pads wow. and the laundry you can imagine. Sure. <laughs> yes. Yep. And the time you're not even counting like no, the not of time even the time. These animals. Just yeah. the supplies. Yes. Okay. All right. And something to keep in mind if you want to adopt a puppy because they are you know they they're adorable and cuddly. Here they it comes. Work, Watch. Though, yes. So just <laughs> yep. keep that in mind if you're up for that. Um, and I'm sh now finding volunteers to hold puppies and feed them is probably. Um, I mean you don't have to twist too many arms, right? Not with the puppy so much. I mean bottle feeding though it's a lot of work. So we do want to have fosters that are yeah they're planning and willing and <laughs> they're planning their escape the right now. We have these guys split up into threes, so they're not all in one place, which helps provide a little bit of relief. But yeah, we are always needing fosters. Whether Bye, Angie B. Have a great puppies, night. Bottling, um, you know, eight weeks, nine weeks, any age, senior dogs, yeah. cats. We need fosters for every animal that you can Some think of. Some with medical needs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, look at their it's fat not butt. Always just getting a puppy, so and yep. you need the volunteers to keep it going. Let's talk about give to the max. Obviously, look at the white one. He's like, I'm out of here, dude. Organization like yours. It what is, is the money go toward? It's well for us. It's going to go a large portion of this. Our goal just today is by midnight tonight, we're hoping to raise hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars. And it seems like a lot, but when our veterinary so just for expenses alone are around 800,000 a year. So wow. when you wow. add that up, I mean, this day is our, it's our biggest fundraiser. And so it's really going to predict what this can we is do rough next start year. rescue. Um, and right now it's kind of, it's hard because the demand is so much. I mean, there's owner surrenders that's increased by almost 50%, um, 46% to be exact. And people are having to surrender due to just not being able to afford their pets. Yeah. Um, and so we're trying to help as much as we can, but we need funding for everything we do. We don't get state, we don't get federal funding. Um, we don't get any government funding. It's all individual donations. So everything that we do in the rescue is because of individual donors. You know, $25 here, $30 there. So, so cute. It all really adds up. Okay. And do you want to touch on this is a community event and it's called uh it's i didn't back. realize this uh, clip so was so long <laughs> you're doing this really to help people who are look oh, it got there up goes look one. One made the break. there it goes oh, <laughs> he's out of here <laughs> then this is so oh, and you the can, rest are gonna follow look they they're go. like oh good uh -oh. idea <laughs> they're running wild uh for people who are re just really want to hang on to their their own puppy yeah. or dog or cat or whatever animal um that is also a crucial part <laughs> of some of the steps and, and some of the help that you it is. Pet parents. Yep, and we're trying to do more and more of that. I mean, because really, we don't want people's animals in the rescue. We don't need them. There's plenty of animals that need help. And so we really want to focus on providing the resources for people. So it's not just helping, you know, one animal at a time. It's helping people with their pets, too. And that's a big part of our mission. Uh, we just did a big give back day at Rough Start where we provided food and supplies to the community. So if you were struggling, don't give up your animal. Contact us. Um, see if we can help. If we have extra supplies, we will for sure help you. Um, and something just so I don't forget to mention, today only for Give to the Max Day, we do have between our board hey, and Mark then Klein. also a generous donor, we have $30,000. <laughs> $30,000. <laughs> Sweet dream on Alex's <laughs> microphone. <dreaming>. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> I need that puppy. <laughs> this one is dreaming, and I think they kind of a little growl in there. They it's got him so back. <laughs> and it's oh. But we have a $30,000 match. So anyone that donates today, every dollar up to thirty. dollars will be matched. So we have that going and again the goal is 175,000. It's just going to help us do so much more of this. <laughs> They're adorable. So this is um, Fox 9, Minneapolis, St. Paul. If you are in the area, this is Rough Start Rescue. I thought it was adorable. They were able to, to sneak out and I thought this would be a good way to end our live today. Everybody take care. Have a great rest of your Monday. Hopefully I'll see you at 7 p.m. 
Eastern Standard Time to go over some of those old record albums that we've all seen and maybe didn't give any second thought to, but there's some weird stories behind them. So, all right, let's roll our credits and dance it out and all that good stuff. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you guys in a couple hours. Be sure to check out my other videos and playlists for more true crime content. And if that's not enough, you can join our Patreon. Don't have a tinfoil hat? It's okay. We'll make you one. It's that easy. See you guys in the next video. See you later. You're bright eyed and bushy tail. About you and your problems, I don't give a damn. You talk way too much. I have heard it now. About you and your problems, I don't give a damn. Did I ask them to do that? But don't wanna face the fact that I ain't got time, I ain't got time, I ain't got time for that. Thanks so much, Jennifer.